182 miles left. My gas. Of course, while well, Blink 182 is playing on the radio. Saying it so. Wagner pitches it ahead to Bancaro. Bancaro gonna take it, fly over the top of Joseph and draw the foul. Goodness, Paolo taking off. Throwing it down. Heel on the line, Joseph. That blue line. The defense. What's going on, dudes and dude it? So as you saw from that very nice highlight from the rookie number one overall pick, Paolo Bancaro. You could see that, yes, he did have not only a great dunk, but a great game overall. He ended up with 27 points, had 9 rebounds and 5 assists. I believe he's the third player in their debut to have those type of stats, like at least 25, 5-5 five and five with LeBron and Grant Hill. So an ex-Laker, or a Laker now, and an ex-Duke player. So that's pretty cool to have him in those stats as well, I think he tied with like Kareem. I, I don't know if it was like because of like a number one overall pick stats with that, those type of stats as well. He tied with Kareem and a lot of other guys too. So once again, a very <clears throat> productive beginning for his career, which obviously we're very excited about. Definitely very fun to watch and hopefully his team can continue to get him some more opportunities and great looks out there. He also ended up signing right before the season started. <clears throat> excuse me, a deal with Jordan Brand, which is obviously the offshoot of Nike Brand, but pretty much Michael Jordan owns that part of the company. And like I always said, it's just funny whenever Michael Jordan, an ex-North Carolina player, signs a Duke player because he's, as of right now, at the, this point of his career, he's just a businessman and wants to make money and doesn't care about rivalries and all that stuff, especially because you don't even really see him at Duke and North Carolina games anyways, especially the past couple years. You haven't really seen him. He might pop up here and there, but not really as much as you would think he would. But when you're the best, you just think about yourself and the best. So I guess that's how it goes. And then, yes, getting to this news finally. Yes, sorry, I wasn't able to do videos earlier in the week. was pretty busy with some family stuff and all that. So finally had some time today, Thursday, to do it. But... Yes, yeah, speaking on USC's 43-42 to loss up there in Utah. Yeah, it's just crazy. You know, obviously the most fans at that stadium packed it up. It was the highest total of, you know, people in the crowd to see watch a game in their history. So that was one thing. And, of course, they were, they were celebrating the lives of two guys that had recently fell in the past year or two, two running backs, from their team who are also I believe California guys but of course they just had that momentum with them as well and of course it did not hurt that the referees made so many questionable calls not only for both sides but especially a lot more against USC and then especially finding out that the Pac-12 commissioner was also in the audience or <clears throat> excuse me in the stadium and could have had an influence on, you know, calls and stuff. It definitely sucks even more because he's just upset that both USC and UCLA are leaving. And I won't be surprised if there's a lot of questionable calls this weekend when UCLA goes up to play against Oregon and Oregon ends up winning. So, you know, just watch out for that. That could be a future thing you see on ESPN and all that crap. But, yeah, there's a lot of questionable plays because there is so many times USC got up 14 and nothing very quickly quieted down that sellout crowd and they had a chance to go up maybe 21 nothing 17 nothing because they had intercepted the ball when Utah was driving but then freaking they called a roughing the passer penalty even though Tuofu just literally pushed the quarterback to the ground and it was within the one step, within the one second of the release. So everything was good. And in the SEC, where Alabama and all them play, it would have been a regular play. They would not have been looked at or reviewed or anything like that. And I think there was like three times where the referees stopped play, stopped the flow of the game to look at targeting calls, to hits on the head, which maybe one was questionable, but the other two were definitely not 
They should not have been in question at all. And then yet all three were not accepted as penalties. They were just let go. So it was not a foul. So either way, they did disrupt the game a lot. And then especially in that fourth quarter, there was another roughing the passer call that could have ended the drive, I believe, for Utah, especially at that time when they were either leading or tied or losing at the time. And, of course, they gave them a new set of downs, and they just kept driving on. And because of stuff like that, it's the reason why a lot of guys ended up getting injured. Jordan Addison on offense, their top wide receiver, ended up going out with a lower leg injury. He should have just went down at the time, but he kind of fought for a little bit extra yardage and stepped weird on the sideline. So that was tough, but definitely like a guy, their top linebacker, their pretty much MVP of the defense so far, if not the second best player in Eric Gentry, the transfer from ASU, the linebacker. He's been great so far, but you know, with so many more extra plays that he had to do and especially in that different elevation, all that stuff, you just knew something was going to end up happening to some of these players, especially to USC guys, because they weren't used to it. And he ended up going with another lower leg injury. And, you know, he even came out of the, the tent when it was still a timeout on the field when they were looking at his ankle and he was hopping on, on one leg out to the middle of the field to try to get his guys galvanized and get going and try to get some spirit and some support in them. But yeah, it just wasn't enough. The USC barely had the ball with like about 40 some seconds left. And Utah fans complained that there was a fake timeout or something like that called right at the end, like the last 10 seconds. And USC got like a couple, five to seven seconds more. But it's like they're way past, you know, 60 to 70 yards to go. And you're complaining that we got, you know, a couple more seconds. And yeah, I don't understand why they're even complaining they got that victory gift wrap to them and that's all you could say but I'm just glad just looking at the press conferences at the end and even seeing the star quarterback crying coming out the field it's just always important to see when certain guys like that because he's a generational type of guy he could just say whatever forget about it not really care about anything but he hates losing and this definitely really affected him and hurt him and he definitely wants to destroy everybody because he's pissed off especially the next opponents. Sadly, they do have a bye week, but it does come at the great time with some of these injuries popping up. So hopefully those guys will be healthy when it comes to next weekend, not this weekend, but the following. When they go on the road to Arizona and play Tucson, who's been a pretty kind of up and coming team because they have a lot of good California guys they recently got in their rookie class. But I think USC should win by a couple scores, especially with the way they're feeling. Then they get like Cal and some other lowly teams before they have to play UCLA and Notre Dame to end the season. And those could be very big games as well when it comes to Pac-12 seeding and maybe college football playoff seeding in the end. So that's all we could hope for. But yeah, sorry for the long rant, but I wasn't able to get this rant out. But yes, it was tough, but we'll see how the rest of the season goes. And then... The Lakers are keeping one of their shooters during the preseason, Matt Ryan. Uh, he shot really good from three-point his last game, and the Lakers really don't have that much three-point shooting on their roster, so I wasn't surprised that they did keep him, but he even played a lot in that first game up there in Golden State, which the Lakers did end up losing, but still wasn't enough. They definitely needed some more three-point shooting, and Obviously, there is that trade for Buddy Heald and Miles Turner. Maybe you forget Turner and just get try to get another shooter from somewhere else or on that team in Indiana as well. But I don't know what they're going to do because a lot of people started posting stats after the, the beginning of the season of guys that should have been linked to the Charters or been traded to the Charters already because of their three-point shooting, and they did very well the first couple games. So... We'll see what Rob Palenka does, but it doesn't look like they're going to rush to make a trade with Russell Westbrook or anybody like that. So we will see. And then when it comes to an NFL executive, apparently some anonymous executive said that the ex-New Orleans head coach, Sean Payton, who's been retired the past year and a half or so, he's supposedly has said to him in private that he wants to coach Justin Herbert, who is obviously the quarterback of the Chargers, which means he would have most likely need to have the head coaching job of the Chargers. And 
Is he an upgrade from Brandon Staley as of right this second? Yes, because he is a championship. He's a Super Bowl winning coach, but I don't know because I do like I do like what I do like I do I does like I do like what Staley is doing right now with the team, especially when his endless knowledge of other players and stuff. If there was some way to be able to. If Staley wasn't too hurt about losing the head coaching job and him staying to be the defensive coordinator with Sean Payton being the head coach, that would be the perfect dream because Staley is a really good scout, talent, look looker person. So I definitely would prefer him still on the team in some capacity, but you never know. And especially because he still has some, I think, a year or two left on the New Orleans contract that he retired from. So if he were to join a team... Before that contract is gone, then I think the Chargers would have to trade draft picks or something else to New Orleans, which would kind of suck in the end. So I don't think they should do that at all, but we'll see. Then the new AP poll for college basketball came out, and of course Duke and USC are getting disrespected. Duke came in at number seven, which is a pretty good number to start out with, but I don't know why they're not getting much talk. They just have the, you know, the number one recruiting class and a lot of good players who are staying on the team still. And no respect, not even top five, number seven overall. But we'll be able to beat a couple of those teams in front of us anyway, so that's fine. And then you, even USC got fully disrespected by not even being ranked in the top 25, which is ridiculous because they've made the tournament the past couple of years. Yeah, two years ago, they went on that Elite Eight run. And then last year, they just played a tough team in that first round in Miami. They were kind of screwed when they got that matchup. But they almost won that game, too. And they're returning a lot of, you know, senior-led guys and a lot of good guys coming in who are, whether it's their second year or freshmen as well, who are very talented. So I don't know why so much disrespect going for USC basketball. But I don't know. We'll see how this goes. But luckily, this guy, ex-USC basketball player, was not disrespected in the NBA when it came to his contract extension. Kevin Porter Jr., who is with the Houston Rockets right now, got an extension on his rookie contract over four years, $82.5 million. So I think it could be that high if he makes certain NBA teams or something like that. It could be even more if he were to make an all-NBA team. But Basically, base salary-wise, it's 82.5, which is pretty good for a guy who was the last selection in the first round. And that year he came out and had a tough time in Cleveland, had like an arrest or something like that. And, you know, it was all going bad until, like how he says, Houston saved his life. So I'm definitely glad that he's able to stick around with a team that believed in him in the first place. So hopefully it is a good marriage moving forward. And then when it comes to, I don't know what I put. Oh, yes. Good luck to all the Duke and USC players in the NBA. Yes, the NBA did start this last Tuesday, a couple days ago. Hasn't been going good for the Lakers. They do have a chance to be 1-1 one and one tonight against the Clippers in their home opener. But it is the Clippers who still haven't played yet, so they're probably going to come out on fire so we'll see how this rivalry goes tonight but yeah a lot of Duke guys and a couple USC guys doing really well to start it off but I'm pretty sure we'll get to that pretty soon then when it comes to Chargers players yes the kicker Dustin Hopkins and Joshua Kelly the running back are both going to be out projectedly two to four weeks so I'm assuming they're not going to go on the IR uh, in an IR spot to be out a full four weeks because they believe they have a chance to come back within two or three. But they thought the same thing with Keenan Allen, who had, who wasn't put on the IR spot. And he even this week, he didn't play this last Monday night. And even going into this week, he recently said that it might be best to hold him out because I think they have a bye week the week after. But it's like, why didn't you just get on an IR spot so we could have signed another player to help us in a certain area? But... Overall, so we got to do with Chargers as of right now. Then DeMar DeRozan did go off in his first game, ex-USC player for the Chicago Bulls. He had 37 points, which is nice to see. 
every time, like, I always kind of figure, like, it is weird, like, how he's always shooting twos, and he still gets a lot of points when he doesn't shoot that many threes. I think he only, I only saw, like, two threes made, maybe, but, yeah, it's just crazy, because that, I figure, always try to figure out who's going to be the next Kobe, but he technically is, you know, move, movement-wise, and certain plays on the court, the way he's scoring and stuff, Kobe was like that, he would always just go for the two, find the the mismatch out there and just get the easy bucket and yeah Kobe did shoot a lot more threes at times compared to DeRozan but DeRozan can still score a lot of points I think his career high is still like 50 or 60 something like that so it's very cool to see and then Zion Williamson the ex-Duke player who's been out pretty much a year and a half or so from the NBA had a pretty nice victory I think they beat Brooklyn I could be wrong but yeah, they were pretty much up the entire game. Ended up having 25 points and nice dunk at the end. But yeah, he looked good. Most of his points came from inside. Didn't really shoot anything. But you know, that's what if that's what you're best at, and that's his higher percentage when it comes to scoring, then might as well just keep him inside. It's working. And then ex Duke player Cam Reddish for the New York Knicks went off. He got some playing time because of some injuries, and of course it worked out. He ended up hitting the three to send the game into overtime against Memphis. I think they still lost, but he still ended up with 22 points, five rebounds, three steals. I think he was three of six on the three-point line. That's 50%. So once again, another guy that I said the Lakers should trade for, and for some reason they haven't. And of course, he ends up going off and ends up being a really good-looking, talented player. So of course, Lakers. And then Jason Tatum opened up the NBA with the Boston Celtics in that game. He ended up going off for 35 points in that one and 12 rebounds. So he's doing pretty much a little bit of everything. They won that game against Philly, I believe. So yeah, sucks. Celtics are doing good. They're 1-0, but Jason Tatum is at least leading them. So I guess that's a good enough thing. And then Ray Maluga, an ex-USC linebacker, I believe he was, I don't know if he's inducted or he's just put like on a watch list for the 2023, the class of 2023 Polynesian Football Hall of Fame, which is what they've been doing for a lot of the Polynesian based players who played in the NFL and college and stuff. So he was definitely a great player while at USC and was really productive when he was with the Cincinnati Bengals until he had some trouble off the field, but Yes, overall, hopefully, good things continue to happen to him. Then, yes, the Chargers ended up beating the Denver Broncos on Monday night, 19-16 in overtime. It was a pretty bad game. I think only maybe one or two touchdowns scored. So the NFL hasn't been really showing out the best teams or the best matchups in these primetime games. I think... They should do it where they should change it. It's hard to do for Monday and Thursday nights, but maybe on that Sunday night game, if the matchup isn't going to be good or point-wise not going to be a lot of points scored, then they should, I forget what it's called, but they should be able to switch it out and put a better matchup because you could, you could do that, change the matchup for a couple hours later. And then even the kicker ended up winning the special teams player of the week because he hit like I think four including a game winner in overtime for the Chargers Dustin Hopkins and every single time he kicked it that I saw he ended up falling to the ground because of how bad his leg was that recently came up some type of hamstring injury but luckily he is going to be out sadly for two to four weeks but they do have a kicker that came in against Cleveland the Chargers did that did pretty good for them so it's not going to be too bad of a loss but yeah, it will be bad if he is missing any more time than the two to four weeks. To end off some miscellaneous news, Creed 3 recently put up some posters of both Michael B. Jordan and Jonathan Majors looking at each other from the each side of the ring, so it looked pretty cool. And usually when movies do that, they release pictures or posters, and there's usually a trailer, which there was the next day, which looked awesome. I mean... I kind of thought maybe it was going to be Clubber Lang's son versus Apollo Creed, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. It looks like there was a childhood event that happened with those two, and uh, the other actor ended up getting 
in jail for like 18 years and then now he's kind of come to get help from Creed to be able to build up because Creed as of this moment isn't really fighting or nothing like that just raising his kid and then all of a sudden he wants to face Creed of course because of what he made him do or had to go through those 18 years in jail so yeah it could it's like a mix of it could be a mix of a bunch of the Rocky themes in some of those later movies, but yeah, overall, it does look awesome, and I will be there. I think it was March something. I'll be there early March, middle March, whatever March. And then DC recently said that they really want Henry Cavill back to be able to do some sort of Man of Steel 2, so it's pretty obvious that uh, Henry Cavill is most likely going to return whether it's a big scene or end credit scene in Black Adam that's starring The Rock that's coming out soon, I think this Friday. But it definitely looks like they're trying to make some plans with them because the old regime didn't really want Cavill anymore. But luckily this new company that's taken over, DC and Warner Brothers, does want him back. So that's good because I really liked Man of Steel. It deserved a real true... Man of Steel 2, but for some reason they did Batman vs. Superman, and then just jumped to Justice League with them, and it wasn't it wasn't good, so hopefully stick on this Man of Steel route with Henry Cavill, and you should be fine, so definitely looking forward to that. Alright, thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe, comment down below, let me know what y'all think. Have a great rest of your day. Bye, fight on.